Okay then, so we've created our form validation now in the PHP and at the minute we're echoing these errors, if there are any errors, at the top of the page up here. Now we don't really want to do that. We want to echo out those errors in the form itself underneath the form field which has an error. So let's go about doing that. First of all, we need to somehow store the error in a variable so that we can output that variable down here in the template, right? So instead of echoing this right here, I'm going to store each one of these in a variable. Now, I'm not going to store each one in its own unique variable. What I'm going to do is create a variable at the top called errors, and I'm going to set this equal to an array. Now, this array is going to be an associative array. We'll use the array keyword just to uh, mix it up a little bit. And then inside, what I'm going to do is create a position for each one of these things. We have one for email, one for the title, and one for the ingredients. So the keys are going to be email, title, and ingredients. So the email to begin with is going to be an empty string because we don't have an error to begin with. So there's going to be nothing in here when the PHP first starts. We're just kind of creating this value ready in the array just in case there is an error with the email or the title, which we're going to do second. So that's going to be an empty string to begin with as well. And then thirdly, the ingredients which will also be an empty string to begin with. So we have this array now of errors, but there's no errors at the minute. All we're gonna do now is update each of these positions, the values of these positions with the error down here. So in this case, this is the email. So I'm gonna grab the errors and update the email pocket, if you like, from the errors. And that is going to be equal to this string right here. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the title. So we'll say errors and then in brackets or square brackets rather the title. And that is going to be equal to this string. And then finally we have the ingredients. So again, errors and we're updating the ingredients. And that is going to be equal to this string. So hopefully all that makes sense. We're just making an errors array with empty values at the minute. So no errors to begin with. And then if we have any errors, it's going to update those positions right here in the array. So now we can output those to the form. So what I'm going to do underneath each input field is another div, a separate div. And that div is going to have a class of red hyphen text just so it stands out a little bit. And there is mainly red on a web page, right? So let's do our PHP tags right here because we're gonna output some dynamic content here. All we're gonna do is echo and we want the error here for the email. So we'll get the errors and we want the email position, okay? So we're echoing out that error right there. Now I'm gonna just copy this dude and paste it down beneath the title and also the ingredients, and then we just need to update these things, the title and the ingredients, right? All right then, so I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna go over here and refresh. Then I'm gonna type nothing to begin with, I'll just submit. And now we can see all of these things here, okay? I'm gonna refresh once again. In fact, let me just go to add and then refresh because I don't think we've caught any changes. Let me try this again, submit. Okay, we still get those errors up there. I've just remembered why that is. We have more than one type of error. We have this error right here, but we also have these errors at the top if the field is empty. So again, I'm just gonna update this so that the errors position becomes this string rather than just directly echo it out. Okay, so we want the title being updated over here and set that equal to this string. And then finally the ingredients. So let's grab that and paste that up here as well. Okay, cool. So now we're updating both of those errors if it's empty or if there's a problem with the type of data we're getting back. So now, fingers crossed, if we go to this page and we don't enter in any information, click Submit, now we get those errors right here, cool. So if we type in something that's not valid, I'm gonna submit, and now we can see email must be a valid email address, okay? Now we could do the title, we'll say Mario Supreme, and we'll do an ingredient which is not valid, so something like this, and then press submit. You can see we don't get an error here under the ingredients, but we get this updated error down here. So this all seems to be working. 
Okay, so you'll notice even though this was valid, when it comes back, it's missing. And even when it's not valid, it still shouldn't be emptied. We should be able to amend that value. So I want to persist the data that the user types in and keep it here when the page comes back to us so we can just update them, all right, rather than those values being deleted. So to do that, we just need to output the title variable, don't we, the ingredients variable, and the email variable down in the template because remember, that's the data we're getting back that the user typed in. So let's try doing that. What I'm going to do is for the value of each input, I'm going to say that is equal to, and then we need some PHP. So let's do that. And we're going to echo out the variable that we need. So in this case, it's going to be the email variable because remember, up here, we say email is equal to this. Okay? So we're grabbing that from the form when the user enters it in and we're setting it equal here. So we should be able to output it to the template, right? Let's do the same thing for the other fields, then we'll test it. So let me come down here and change this to title. And finally come down here and we'll change this one as well to ingredients. And what I'm going to do is save that and I'm just going to refresh the page or rather go to the same address again and we should get an error. You see here, <laughs> that's not what we expected, right? Undefined variable, undefined variable title, undefined variable ingredients. So it's saying to us, look, you come to this page and you want the value of these input fields to be this variable. However, this variable is undefined at this moment in time. But why is that? Because we define them up here, don't we? Right? Well, think about it. When we first go to the page, we've not yet submit the form and we're trying to load these variables. Now, they've not been set yet because we've not submit the form. This code here only ever runs once the form has been submit. So currently, we're not setting these variables until we have a form submission. So the first time we come to here, we're going to get these undefined variable errors and that's not very good. So what we should do is initialize our variables up here to be empty strings to begin with so that the first time a user lands on the page then we output those variables we're just outputting empty strings inside these different input fields right so they'll be blank then when a user clicks submit we're updating those variables over here and then when the template is sent back to the user it's updated in these values with those variables i hope that makes sense so what we're going to do just above errors is create or initialize these variables. I'm going to say that the title is equal, and here's a little trick. If we're setting all of them to the same value, which we are doing here, we're setting them all to a blank string, we can just say the title is equal to the email, which is equal to the ingredients, and that is going to be equal to an empty string. So we're setting them all here to an empty string, okay? So to begin with, that should work. So I'm going to go to add again, and now we don't get those errors. We just get empty strings. But this time, if I type in Sean and pizza title of something like this, which is totally not valid, ingredients, something similar, then we're going to get errors on all of these. Submit it. But you see now, these values, they persist. They stay on the form. So that's a better user experience. I'm going to update these now, the net ninja.co.uk. I'm going to make a valid title. I'll call it the Ninja Supreme. Uh, I'm going to keep this one the same. Submit it. Notice the errors have gone here now, but we have this error still here, but it still stays. Now I'm going to update this with something that is valid. Tomato, cheese, and tofu. And submit. And now we get no errors. So, my friends, this now is all working. That's really good. We've done our validation. We're displaying any errors. And we're also showing the data that they initially typed in. So we're not deleting it each time around. We're persisting that data. Now, I think the next step would be to redirect the user. If all this form is valid, like it is now, and they've submitted it, then we should redirect them back to the home page to show them that, yeah, it's been done. OK, afterwards, we're going to save the data to a database and then redirect them to the home page. But for now, I just think redirect them. Because that says to me, yep, yeah, we've accepted this form. Now I'm taking you back to the home page. So we're going to do that, my friends, in the very next video. One extra thing I want to do before I close off this video is add on the HTML special 
chars function around these different values that we output to the browser. We're doing it inside this value attribute, but it doesn't matter. We still should do this when we're outputting information that a user has input themselves because you never know that could be malicious code and we want to escape any of those special characters. So make sure whenever you're outputting anything to the browser, we always use this. Let me do this down here as well and enclose those in brackets. And then finally, the ingredients and close that in brackets down here as well. Cool. So that is better. Now we're echoing these out, but we're enclosing them in HTML special chars.